Dear friends, I apologize for the delay. We had some small technical issues. So today we have our first lecture on the property law. And here with me is Jenny Shaw. She is a, a conveyancer who qualified via QLTS in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, Jenny, right? That's right, yes. And since then, you actually, you've been practicing uh, property law and conveyancing, right? Yes. Um, good morning, Olga, and good morning, everyone. Yes, I've been practicing um, in property since 2019. In general terms, since people would have also to choose possibly as to their future career, uh, how do you find conveyancing um, as a practice area? Um, it's a little funny because uh, when I started reading for QLTS, uh, property was one of my least favorite subjects. Uh, but to my surprise, I actually scored the most in property um, and a turn of events. It so happened I ended up in property. So um, I think once you get the hang of property law, it is quite easy because um, in a way it is procedural. So more like ticking off like a box of um, list. Uh, so it's kind of keeping you on track uh, so that you don't miss uh, any important aspects. Um, so property, once you get the grasp is quite um, easy and um, at the same time challenging because each title is different. Um, so each transaction is different. Thank you very much. So actually we covered a very theoretical elements during the last lectures. We had Oliver for the land law. So mm -hmm. um, um, this, this lecture, I suppose it should be more chill and that would be great if you share your experience from very practical point of view, what is uh, actually a uh, property transaction and conveyancing, because this is exactly what we are going to cover today, focusing on initial steps that solicitors should make uh, in the property transactions and then uh, contract and all the stages of the conveyancing, you know, this key processes that we have, and also a little bit on taxation uh, to the extent it's relevant the, to the property uh, and conveyancing. So, uh, let's imagine, let's imagine, I think that would be a good point uh, if we take it through the whole lecture, that I'm your client and you obviously a property solicitor. We have uh, in the on the previous lectures, we made an assumption, we made such an example that me and Oliver, we are purchasing some um, property. Let's say I'm a, I'm a buyer um, uh, and he is a seller. And mm -hmm. I came for uh, legal advice to Jenny and Jenny is um, go going to be our solicitor for my solicitor for that transaction. Um, so step by step, starting from uh, initial steps that solicitor needs to um, undergo when client comes to a solicitor, what would be the first thing that we generally need to check and to do? Okay, um, yes, um, in a very practical scenario, um, as we are all regulated by the SRA, um, it is extremely important to identify who the client is. Uh, it might sound quite silly, but um, that is given so much importance in the practical aspect. Um, and if you fail to do that, you could be in breach of protocol, you could, be, you could find yourself in real trouble um, with the firm and also uh, SRA in terms of disciplinary action. So first and foremost, identifying the client. So uh, basically um, seeing who the client is. So um, if it is an individual, it is a relatively straightforward. It could be a company. Um, it could be a power of attorney sale. It could be a probate sale. Um, so in those sort of cases, it goes a, the com the exact client is probably disguised um, in the sense like company obviously has a director who um, does all the procedural work on behalf of the company. So who is your client? It is the company who is your client. However, you need to find out um, who exactly is the beneficial owner of the company. So if, if it's just one director, it's again a bit more um, straightforward than a company with multiple directors or a company with um, a person who has got significant control. So it is very key to identify uh, who exactly your client is. Again, if it is a, a lasting power of attorney sale, then um, the title owner, as in the proprietor, is actually X 
but then um, the person who comes to you and who's going to act as uh, for practical purposes as your client is the person who actually has the benefit of the power of attorney um, or probate the executor would be the one who is actually uh, acting um, for as in uh, would be That's your right client right. for whom you are acting on. Um, mm. So the first key thing is to identify who your client is.